Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and after our launch day review of the RTX 4070 Super, where we analysed NVIDIA's Founders Edition, well, today we are back and taking a look at two partner cards. The cards include the Gigabyte Aero OC, as well as the Palette Jetstream OC. As the name suggests, both are factory overclock models, but they do have varying features, so let's dive in and find out what these cards have to offer. Kicking off with the design of both graphics cards then, we're going to start with the Palette Jetstream OC. Now this card is very much designed to be a no frills experience, just focusing on the basics rather than giving you any extra bells and whistles. That's immediately clear from the fairly spartan design it must be said. It uses an entirely black plastic shroud without too much that grabs your attention. Some may like it, some may not, but do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. It is a triple fan cooler though, with each fan measuring approximately 95mm in diameter, while it's also a triple slot card, with dimensions coming in at 328.9 by 130.5 by 63.5mm, and it weighed in at 1440 grams on my scales. As for the backplate, this is a full length metal design, though there are some large cutouts towards the end of the card to allow air to pass directly through the heatsink. Do note, however, that there's no lighting of any kind on the Jetstream OC, nor is there a dual BIOS switch. We can also see that power is supplied by a single 12 volt high power connector, though a dual 8 pin adapter is included in the box. Display outputs, meanwhile, are entirely standard, with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. Moving on to the Gigabyte Aero OC then, this is definitely a more feature rich card, as you would expect considering the MSRP of £659.99. I have to say that Gigabyte made an excellent first impression on me though with the white design. It's got a white plastic shroud though there is a silver metal plate that surrounds the three fans. Each of those three fans measure 90mm in diameter, and they do feature Gigabyte's alternate spinning technology, meaning the central fan spins in reverse relative to the outer two. In terms of dimensions as well, the Aero OC is slightly smaller than the Jetstream, measuring 300 by 130 by 57.6mm, while it weighed in at 1263 grams on my scales. Over on the front side of the card, this is home to the GeForce RTX logo, while the Aero logo towards the IO bracket is the sole RGB lighting zone on the card. As for the backplate, this is a full length design made of silver metal, but it does have a large cutout towards the end to allow air to pass directly through the heatsink. We can also note the dual BIOS switch just above the power connector, and this gives you a choice between the OC and the silent BIOS. Now, both are identical in terms of clock speeds and power targets. The only difference is the fan curve, but we do test both later on in the video. Power then is again supplied by a single 12 volt high power connector. And again, a dual adapter is included in the box. Lastly, for display outputs, they're exactly the same with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. That's going to do it then for our quick look at each of the cards and their designs. Now it's time to move on to testing. For this, we are of course using our regular GPU test system, which is provided to us by PC Specialist. This is based on Intel's i9-3900KS CPU, paired with the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard, and we've also got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 memory. Starting off then with GPU thermals, it is worth noting that we have tested both of the Gigabyte Aero OC's BIOS modes. The Palette Jetstream OC and the Aero OC Silent BIOS end up delivering very similar temperatures. Both are about a 5 degree reduction compared to Nvidia's Founders Edition. The Aero OC's OC BIOS however is better still, dropping the GPU temperature by 10 degrees and the hotspot by 12 degrees, though it is fair to say all three results here are very solid. As for memory temperatures then, again, both aftermarket cards do provide decent improvements over the NVIDIA Founders Edition. The Jetstream OC drops peak memory thermals back to 66 degrees, 
while the Aero OC is a touch better with the Stylin BIOS at 64 degrees and the OC BIOS being better still, peaking at just 56 degrees. As for noise levels then, we again have more positive results. The actual noise readings from all three modes are very similar. Both graphics cards are very easy on the ears and I'd be happy with either in my own PC. Now the Gigabyte Aero OC did come in just a touch quieter when using the Silent BIOS and that one saw the fan spin at 1170 RPM while the OC BIOS increased fan speed to 1485 RPM. The Jetstream OC meanwhile ran its fans at 1150 RPM producing 35 decibels of noise and I'm happy to say that neither card had any issues with coil whine during my testing. Next up then is noise normalized performance where we increase fan speed on both graphics cards to hit 40 decibels and then rerun our thermal tests. The results here do show fairly similar performance between the Aero and the Jetstream, though the Aero OC is fractionally better overall, delivering a hotspot temperature that's 2.5 degrees cooler. Both are decent improvements over the Founders Edition in this regard however, and it's not like the differences are massive. Moving on to Power Draw though, here we did notice a difference between the two cards. The Pallet Jetstream OC for instance has a 240 watt TGP out of the box and we saw it pulling 236 watts in Cyberpunk 2077. Gigabyte hasn't increased the TGP of the Aero OC however, so it remains at 220 watts and we measured power draw of 219.7 watts. Despite that though, both cards actually came in at a very similar real world clock speed, both hovering around 2750 MHz as you can see from this graph. In fact, over our 30 minute stress test, the Aero OC averaged 2749 MHz with the Jetstream OC hitting 2746 MHz, so that's almost identical behavior, and the Aero OC Silent BIOS also runs at essentially the same speeds. That of course means that actual gaming performance is very, very similar between the two cards and it shows why we don't focus heavily on gaming performance in these AIB card reviews. Both GPUs came in about 50 MHz faster than the Founders Edition, so gaming performance is only 2-3% ahead across the 5 games we tested. That does mean that both of these cards come in even closer to the 4070 Ti, but the differences are very small compared to the Founders. As a reminder though, if you do want to see how the 4070 Super performs in a much wider array of games, you can check out our day one review. Of course, I did also try overclocking to see just how far we could push each of these GPUs. Starting with the Jetstream OC, Pallet has actually locked the power limit at just 104%, so it can't be increased any further than 255 watts. We were still able to add 170 MHz to the GPU core and 1500 MHz to the memory while overclocking. Gigabyte took the opposite approach however, and the Aero OC's power limit can be increased all the way up to 320 watts or 145% on the power slider. Of course, that's what I did, and I managed to add 180 megahertz to the GPU and 1520 megahertz to the memory. As expected, that did mean the Aero OC delivered a higher stable frequency, averaging over 3000 megahertz in the real world, compared to just under 2900 megahertz for the Jetstream OC. Both overclocks still delivered reasonable enough performance gains. We're talking about an extra 5 to 8% FPS for each card. It's fine, but nothing super exciting. The only other thing to note here is that the Aero OC did pull more power once overclocked, hitting over 250 watts, while the Jetstream OC remains at 237 watts. That brings us then to the end of our look at the Gigabyte Aero OC and Palette Jetstream OC 4070 Super graphics cards. Both are certainly impressive, though at the end of the day, it all comes down to your priorities. The Jetstream OC for instance is really designed for someone who wants a no frills graphics card with no RGB lighting or any other bells and whistles that may drive up the price. It's really all about delivering a solid cooler with low noise levels and it certainly achieves that. Now I do like that approach but it does mean the price has to be right. We know that the Jetstream OC isn't going to be an MSRP card as that position is filled by Palette's dual model, but considering the relative lack of features, 
I do think the price premium has to be modest over the baseline £579 MSRP. Anything over a 10% premium for me does feel a bit too steep, but if it does come in below that, I think this is a card worth picking up if you just want something that works and you can set and forget. As for Gigabyte's Aero OC, well, this is clearly aimed at a different kind of buyer, someone who prioritizes aesthetics, but also wants to pay for extra features, including dual BIOS and RGB lighting. I have to say I personally really, really like this card and we can't forget it did offer us the best noise normalized thermals of the 34070 Supers we have tested so far. With an MSRP of £660, however, that is a 14% premium over the baseline £579 asking price, which will be enough to put some people off. Speaking for myself, however, I would happily pay that difference considering the design, extra features and thermal performance on offer, but do let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. That is where I'm going to leave this video though, guys. So if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. And as I said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. I know for a fact there's going to be two videos coming next week that you won't want to miss. If you want to carry on the conversation with us as well, you can find an invite link to our Discord server down in the description. And while you're there, you can also check out our merch store. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though, guys. I'm Dominic 4 Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.